Number 29. For each of the following molecules, indicate the hybridization requested and whether or not the electrons will be delocalized. And then we have the phosphate ion, which is PO4, 3 minus, and we want to find the central phosphorus hybridization. Now, in order to find a hybridization, the easiest way to go about this is to draw the Lewis structure. So even though it's an extra step, just seeing the visual will help you out to find the hybridization. Now, they do give us a hint here that the central phosphorus is the central atom. So in PO4, 3 minus, I have one phosphorus that now has four oxygens surrounding it. So let's just draw that out. One, two, three, three, four. Now let's draw the Lewis, uh, not the Lewis, we're doing the Lewis structure. Let's draw the valence electrons. Now around each oxygen, there are six valence electrons because oxygen is in group 6A or 16, so lucky number six. So I'm gonna say, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And right, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, let's do one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six. And now phosphorus is in group 5A or 15 on your periodic table. So that has lucky number five, which is my lucky number. What's your lucky number? Do you guys still have a lucky number? Growing up, I had to have five or 55 on all of my sports jerseys. Anyway, let's connect dot to dot, right? We're going to make a single bond. So single bond, single bond, and... I hear you. Hold on. I know you're screaming at me. What did I forget? Well, not that I forgot, but I made the bonds before I added the three electrons, right? I do see that I have a charge here. That makes all the difference. So this negative three means that we gained three electrons. And you just want to make it fair, right? You want to uh, put you know, one dot around each oxygen. And remember, those gained electrons always go to the most electronegative element, which are the outer ones. So maybe I'll just put one over here, one over here, and one over here. So that's a total of three. Now I made my single bonds, and now let's see if we have the octet. So for this oxygen, I have two, four, six, eight electrons. That's all good. This oxygen, I have two, four, six, eight, so that's all good. This oxygen, I have two, four, six, eight electrons, so that's all good. But now this oxygen needs a little help. Two, four, six, seven. But that's okay because I have one more electron that I can go dot to dot with to make a double bond, and now this oxygen's good. And the phosphorus, even though it's got... Um, 10 electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Phosphorus is one of those elements that can have multiple bonds, uh, uh, not multiple bonds, obviously it can have multiple bonds, but it can have the expanded octet, meaning it could have more than eight if it's the center. And now since everything is cool, we have to bracket this off and put a negative three in the upper, upper right-hand corner. Now the Lewis structure is done. Let's now do the hybridization. And they wanted to do the hybridization of the phosphorus. So maybe I'll just do that. So hybridization comes down to just the orbitals that are overlapping to form your sigma bonds in your Lewis structure. So it could range from sp all the way to sp3d2. But the easiest way to do this is to just know how many letters are in your hybridization. So for example, sp3 has s, s and 3 P's. That's a total of four letters. If I strip away one of the P's, that's sp2, and that has a total of three letters. And then if you strip one more away, you have sp, that has a total of two letters. And the number of letters corresponds with the number of things. Two letters, two things. Three letters, three things. And the things are what's going on around the element that you're, you know, that's in question. 
So one single bond is one thing. One double bond, even though it's got two lines, is still classified as one thing. A triple bond is one thing, and a lone pair is one thing. So let's see, what does the phosphorus have? Well, it's got one single bond, so that's one thing. It's got another single bond, that's two things. It's got another single bond, that's three things. And it's got a double bond. So even though there's two lines, that's still classified as four things. So four things, four letters, four things, four letters, SP3. So the phosphorus is SP3 hybridized. So that answers one of the questions. And now we have to answer the second one. Will these electrons be delocalized? So in order to do that, I'm just going to strip away the blue highlighter um, just to show you. But delocalization just basically means that electrons that are in bonds are not specifically bound to one distinct element and that they can travel from one element to another. Now, the way that we can find out if electrons are delocalized is you got to have at least a multiple bond somewhere. So I see that, right? I see that I have a double bond. And now just take note, do you have a center atom that has the double bond to the oxygen, but do you have another oxygen? Yeah, I actually have three more. So you say to yourself, well, could I have drawn this in a different configuration? I chose to put the double bond up here, but could I have put the double bond over here? Sure. And then this one would be the single bond. Could I have chose to put the double bond down here? Sure. And then this would be a single bond. And the same thing goes for over here, right? When you can make that choice, that is what delocalization is all about. So in this case, will the electrons be lo will be delocalized? Yes, you will have delocalized electrons because we chose to put the double bond up top, but it could have been the left, the right, and the bottom. So that means that those electrons are not bound specifically to one atom, that they could bounce around to other atoms, hence the word delocalized. And let's just color this in nice and pretty and call it a video. All right, what do you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. And um, I, ju I just hope you're having a great day out there. Thank you for all the support uh, thus far on this YouTube experience. My brother and I, we really do appreciate you. And, and thanks for being part of this community. Keep working hard. Keep studying. And good luck on all your tests coming up in the future. All right. I'm rooting for you. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.